Hey guys, here it is. Got it towed home safely, got it in the garage, and I'm already ripping it apart to fix some things. So, one thing I thought was cool is this whole jack stand setup. So, as you can see, I got the frame rot, and this is the case on all four jacking points. Um, well, it's not frame, it's actually the metal covering. But this jack works perfectly fine. Um, the hole in there is still very much intact, so we're good. It's just this outer metal that you can see is a little uh, little rusted, so I have to cut that out and uh, re-weld or weld in some pieces. So what we're working on to begin with is motor mounts, because as soon as you shut the car off or if the car is idling, it is um, incredibly shaky and just jostling the whole car. So as you can see, I already took out the whole air box. Uh, that was very simple. You just pop off the tabs, remove the air filter, or the air cover, then the filter, and then I just, these four screws that you can see, um, one here, one here, and then one here and here, and that is, that holds in the back of the air box, and what you do is you just kind of pull it down and out, and the whole thing just pops down, and uh, you're good to go. What's really good about this is that the uh, air intake there is facing dirt it's going to be very difficult for dirt to get in there because it, the dirt would have to go up into the tubes unlike some other systems where you take off the air filter and uh air i mean dirt could get down into a tube this the dirt would have to travel up into the tube so looking down uh let's see if i can get a good view here so looking down you can see i'm trying to get a light Let me try. Kind of see the motor mount in there. So much easier to see this uh, in person. I'm staring right at it in person. It's just kind of difficult. Um, but that motor mount is definitely shot. So I'm taking the screw out. I was able to get the screw out of the bottom. And I think I was able to get the screw on this side loose. Now there is another screw on the side closest to the engine that is a little more difficult to get to. Um, if we work our way over here, this motor mount that you're staring at right there is, um, sorry, I'm holding a light in one hand and the camera in the other. That motor mount is also shot, but it looks like it's a bit easier to get to that one since it's on the driver's side. But essentially, I just have the car jacked up. And what I did was, uh, let me try finding it. There's the hole. Sorry, guys, trying to angle the camera in here and the light. So there's the hole. It's an 8 millimeter hex socket. I just put the 8 millimeter one up there and I put it onto a half inch extension. Um, put it onto a half inch extension and then switch it to a half inch ratchet. So this essentially was my uh, was my setup. Um, I've got the half inch ratchet with a half inch extension and then the adapter to go from half inch to three quarters or three eighths, whatever. And then that extension down to, and I didn't have, right now I have a 10 millimeter on the end there, but initially I had this, um, this right here, this is a eight millimeter, this is an eight millimeter hex socket, I believe. So it's an eight millimeter down there for the bottom one, and then it's a six millimeter for the top ones. So yeah, that's it so far. Already got that ripped apart. Those bolts didn't come out too difficult. Uh, you did have to use a little bit of pressure, at least I did. This is a New England car. It was located, I bought it right out of the Boston area, very close to Boston. So it's seen probably uh, pretty intense winters its whole life. It's been there since 1995. So if I can get those bolts out, with this being a New England car, hopefully you'll be able to get your, your ones out without too much trouble. Okay, so as you can see, I was able to get the engine mount off. This is off the driver's side. It actually didn't look too bad once I pulled it off, but when I had the uh, engine running, it definitely made, um, it definitely shook a bit even on this mount so gonna go ahead and replace it anyways especially since I already have it out so as you can see here I have the um, 
engine jacked up a bit, I put a long piece of wood right on the oil pan. Um, I was told, you know, you got to be careful. You don't want to jack straight in the oil pan, so use some wood. Um, so what I did was, let me try getting up in here. You can see that. That's the frame of the vehicle on the bottom. And then you can see the hole where the engine mount goes. What I had to do is reach my hand up in there, get the hex socket on, jack up the car a bit to allow room for me to put the ratchet onto the socket. And then I was only able to get it like enough to break the nut loose. And it was just enough where I broke it loose, had to pull the ratchet back off and then spin the rest by hand. So yeah, here's a different view of that. I might be a little muffled right now, but you can see where to get in there, you have to um, reach your hand back in from underneath to get behind there. Hopefully you can see that. And I didn't have to take this little suspension piece out. So I want to show you on the passenger side, um, it's actually much easier to get the engine mount out. You can see here, I've gone underneath the vehicle and I jacked it up. Now to get the engine off the mount and to get it up this high, I actually had to lower the jack off of the oil pan and jack it up from the alternator brace or the bracket that holds the alternator on. So I used a smaller piece of wood, put the jack um, underneath the alternator or that bracket, jacked it up and I was able to get, this is a 3 8 inch ratchet and that's all you should need. You also have a metal cover that goes over this um, over this engine mount and so I was able to remove that as well. At first it's pretty stuck. You just have to uh, pull out the center bolt out of the engine mount and then wiggle that cover quite a bit and then it'll pop out. Uh, so yeah, as long as you jack up from the alternator bracket, you should be able to get this engine mount up high enough in order to get back there to get that back bolt. So hopefully this helps. Again, this is the passenger side, so this is easier to do compared to the driver side. Okay, so I was able to get my engine mounts replaced without a problem. Got everything in, got everything put back together. Actually, I had to take a crowbar and pull the engine forward on the driver side because the mount wasn't lining up with the mounting arm and then the bolt that had to go through. It wasn't lining up quite right. I flipped the motor mount around. Uh, that really didn't do anything. I didn't think it would. I just wanted to make sure. Um, but yeah, that just, you know, took extra time. So I ended up just taking a crowbar and pulling the engine forward slightly. Uh, one little tip I would suggest is when you're getting down and you're trying to pull those um, six millimeter bolts off of the uh, engine mount, Sometimes there's not much room, so here's the solution I kind of came up with. Essentially, this is the same, this bar that I'm using is what came with the tool. And, you know, this is pretty standard for storing these sockets. I just clipped the little piece, and then because I couldn't fit a, rat, a whole ratchet down there, but I couldn't, you know, I couldn't get enough torque just with the um, socket. Hey guys, just want to clarify something here. I did not use this to break any bolts loose. I simply used this once I'd broken a bolt loose, but I wasn't able to get the ratchet in there uh, just because there was no room. I used this to loosen the bolt the rest of the way. So just want to clarify that this wasn't actually used to torque anything down or to break any bolts loose. It itself. So I attached this and I just clipped the other end with some snips and was able to get this in there and then that gave me enough torque to you know turn back and forth and also if it got stuck i could just slide it one direction to the other that way i could continue spinning so this helped a little bit i ended up jacking up the engine even further so then this really wasn't all that useful um because if you keep if you jack up the engine even further you're able to get a full um socket in there i mean a, a full ratchet so but this could come in handy to others if you can't get a a, um, a ratchet in there and you only need it and you only have a little bit of clearance this uh this should help but yeah everything's back together uh when it's idling it's great there's no extra shaking when i shut the car off it does shake a little bit still um i think that's due to my the fuel shutoff valve if that gets a little weak 
then I guess it's known that it can kind of delay the shut off. And so by delaying the shut off, it causes a little bit of extra shaking. So I'm gonna, you know, do a vacuum pump test on that and then see from there whether that valve needs to be replaced or not. So yeah, overall, this was a success. Uh, first job on the Mercedes, got it done. Not really any issues. So hopefully this helps you guys uh, as you replace your own motor bounds. So thanks for watching and I hope to see you in the next video.